Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a another sewing tutorial for those of you who are new around here or don't know who I am My name is Madison. I'm an Instagram creator blogger and high school fashion design teacher And it's because of all of those loves and passions and hobbies that I have that I make videos here on YouTube all about sewing fashion and creative DIY things along with a few travel vlogs here and there But I'm glad that you're joining me for today's video because I am very excited about this project Project, namely because I wasn't even planning on making this project or making this video but that's what happens when you go to Hobby Lobby only to buy t-shirts and then they have fabric on sale and you get an idea for a project to make a dress that you saw on Instagram and suddenly you're buying like three different types of fabric and spending your entire weekend filming a video and making a dress. So anyways, that is kind of the backstory for today's video but anyways I am super excited about this project because one, it's just super fun and the stress is awesome. And also because I recently learned a new technique with my sewing machine, which is shearing. Um, you might know it as smocking, but really the technical term is shearing. It's what is all over this top today, where you basically sew with elastic thread. And I know what you might be thinking, how in the world do you do that? That sounds so hard. It's actually so easy and very addicting and you can do so many things with it. So today's video is inspired by a dress that I recently saw on Instagram by the brand Daily Sleeper. Now Daily Sleeper is a very classic brand. A lot of their dresses are just very ladylike but they're also just classics and traditional. Um, they really only have like four or five dress styles but they come in different prints and colors and I love all of them but obviously again I'm the person who's not going to go out and spend $200, $300, $400 on a dress when I can make it myself and film a video to show you guys how to do the same. So they have this one specific dress that has a sheared yeah, sheared, smocked bodice. Um, it has these long puffy sleeves. They are gorgeous and it is a midi dress. So I thought, why not make that dress? Um, like I said, I was not planning on making this dress or filming this video, but I was at Hobby Lobby and they had all of this awesome spring fabric for sale and I just started looking through it and suddenly I was holding like three bolts of fabric in my arms going to get it cut. Um, they had a specific fabric though that was a pale pink with silver stripes and immediately when I saw it I thought that could work for the dress that I'd recently seen on Instagram. Now the thing about the dress on Instagram by Daily Sleeper is that it was actually a pale pink and white gingham um, but I was just going to make it in a different fabric and then as I was standing at the cutting counter I looked to my left or in the video. The left is like probably this way technically because the video is you know opposite anyways i looked to my left and i completely forgot that they had this whole collection of gingham lightweight cotton poly cotton blend fabrics at hobby lobby and i spotted the light pink and white gingham mini check and i decided if i'm gonna make this dress i have to make it look exactly like the original because the whole reason i love the original dress was also because it was a light pink and white which is just classic and I love that and it's perfect for the summertime. So I decided to not get the cheaper fabric and to buy the full price fabric although I think I was able to use a 40% off on it and so I picked it up but got home and spent my entire weekend making the dress but it was so much fun and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. So as you will see in this tutorial as you see and the top I'm wearing today um, and obviously the thumbnail for this video it is a midi dress with long poofy flowy sleeves and a sheared bodice now if you keep up with fashion trends you probably have known and seen and can tell that this style of bodice um, either just as a top as a dress you name it, is super in fashion right now. It is very trendy, a lot of people are wearing it. Um, honestly, up until last week, I did not own a bodice like this until I made this one to practice the technique. And I absolutely love it now, definitely going to make more. Um, but if you don't have a sheared bodice, hopefully you can learn how to make one from this video. Um, I'm 
making a dress. So if you want to learn how to make a bodice, one of my friends on YouTube actually filmed a fantastic tutorial all about making a sheared bodice. Her name is Lauren. You can go to her channel, Just Lauren Johnson. I'll link it below and watch it. I definitely got a lot of ideas and she taught me a couple of things that I hadn't thought about before that I applied to this project. So if you are interested in making a bodice, go check her out. But I'm going to use those same techniques on a dress today. Now one thing I like about the shearing of projects one is if you are brand new to sewing or have very basic sewing skills, you can easily do this project. Um, it might seem really, really hard and look hard, but it honestly is super easy. The only thing is that it's very time consuming. I probably spent like five hours just sewing the shearing of the elastic thread for this project. But in the long run, it is worth it. The pattern pieces are so easy and in the end, you just get a really awesome trendy garment. One thing I like about this style as well is that it is very flattering on all body types. Because it's elastic, it conforms to you. Um, and it just looks good on everybody. And also because it is such a kind of stretchy and adaptable style, um, Three different people who are three different sizes could potentially wear the exact same size of top or dress because it easily conforms to different body types. So I think it's just really great and versatile style. And it's also super comfortable. You might think because it's stretchy and elastic that it's conforming, but it's actually super, super comfortable. Comfortable, And most of the styles are really great for summer and for the heat. So I'm super excited about this project. I feel like I've rambled and talked a lot so we should just go ahead and dive right in and get started so without further ado let's get designing here's a quick sketch up of this dress the main thing to keep in mind is that this bodice has a lot of shearing going on which means we have to take that into account when drafting the bodice piece and I will actually show you how to do, to do the math based on your bust measurements in a moment this dress also only has three pattern pieces. It has a bodice, a sleeve, and a skirt. So super basic, but we have to make sure to do the correct math and widths. Now the math to draft the bodice piece is to take your bust measurement, times it by 1.5, and then divide that by two. And that will give you the width of your bodice pattern piece. Now I decided to draft this piece on a fold, so I divided that number in half again. Another important thing to keep in mind for this bodice is that it's not a straight square or a rectangle. You need to make sure to draw in a curve for under the arm. Alright, and now it's time to draft the sleeve. So for this sleeve, I used a pattern piece that I already had. So if you're doing this project, I would just take a normal sleeve and double it. It needs to be extra wide since there's going to be elastic. I also wanted to make sure to change the top of my sleeve to be flat across and then also draw in that curve that will be sewn to the underarm section of the bodice. And based on the length of these sleeves, you can kind of just measure to decide where you want it to fall. They're kind of meant to be mid-length or long sleeve. And now it's time to cut the pattern pieces out of the actual fabric. So for the bodice, you are going to need two pieces. You're going to need two pieces of basically every single pattern piece. And I drafted my bodice to be on the fold, so I just doubled my fabric, placed it on the fold, and cut it out. It's gonna be the same exact thing for my sleeve and my skirt. And now it's time to cut these skirt pieces. And as you probably have seen in my other videos, I don't actually use pattern pieces to cut my skirts. I just use the actual width of the fabric and then I measure to decide what length I want to have for my skirt. And I made this skirt 31 inches long, which was the perfect midi length. 
after all of my pattern pieces were cut out, I decided to go and search all my raw edges. And as I've said in the past, searching is not a necessary step. You can finish your seams any way that you want, and you don't even have to finish your seams if you don't want to. But I decided to go all around my sleeves, the top and bottom of my bodice, the side seams, and my skirt to search all of the raw edges before I actually started sewing them together. And while I was at my serger, I went ahead and sewed the sides of my sleeves together on the serger instead of using a normal stitch on my sewing machine. After all of my raw edges are serged, it's now time to sew all of my side seams. So this is the side seams of the skirt and the side seams of the bodice. And I also went ahead and enforced the side seams or under seam of my sleeves. Now that my skirt is one complete piece, I surged the bottom so that I could go and press the bottom up later for a hem. Now it's time to prep my machine to sew the shearing. In order to sew the shearing, you will use elastic thread in your bobbin. You actually have to wind this yourself, and I got my elastic thread from Amazon. I'll link it below. As you're winding this by hand, you need to make sure not to pull it too tightly. There shouldn't be any stretching of the elastic in the bobbin. And you will use a lot of these. I think I used eight of them throughout the process of sewing all of the shearing on my bodice. Here's what my machine was set to. The tension was at five. The seam was at a straight seam. I set my stitch length between two and three and my stitch width was at a two. And this is what the shearing looks like. You might have to play around with it a little bit on your own machine. And now it's time to start the tedious process of shearing. So I started at the top of my bodice, which meant that I had to alternate between my front and my back pieces since they weren't actually connected until I get past my underarms. You are just going to sew line after line of shearing, and I sewed mine at a quarter of an inch, so at one fourth, which was just at the edge of my presser foot for my sewing machine, so I didn't actually have to draw any lines, which was really helpful, and you just continue to do this until your entire bodice is sheared, and like I said, this is a very tedious project. It probably took me five hours just to sew all of the shearing. Once you get past the underarms of your bodice, you can actually sew continuous seams and circles around. So that's really helpful because you don't have to switch between the front and the back. You just sew a continuous loop, back stitch it in the seam, and add another row. And when I was doing this, I also decided to tie my elastic tails inside of my bodice together just to reinforce those knots to make sure I didn't have any busted elastic or shearing on the inside. This is what all of the shearing looks like on my bodice before I add the skirt and I actually left about an inch and a half of fabric unsheared at the bottom so that I could sew on my skirt and then afterwards add two additional rows of shearing. Before I attached my bodice to my skirt, I took my skirt over to my machine to gather it by sewing two rows of basting stitches around the circumference of the waist and then going in to pull those together and gather the waist. And I just realized that you can see my laptop screen, so the show I was watching is in fast time. Um, but if you've never watched the TV series Bones, I highly suggest it. It is such a good crime slash science show. And now it's time to attach the gathered skirt to the bottom of the bodice by pinning right sides together. Now I pin this right along the edge of my bodice and I realized that the fabric that I had left after the shearing 
was a little uneven on each side so I went ahead and put some markings where I actually needed to pin and sew my skirt on and then I was going to trim that off later and then go ahead and sew in those extra two rows of shearing to complete my bodice length. Alright, my bodice and my skirt are attached together, so next up is to attach my sleeves right under the arms, and then also to sew two additional lines of shearing at the base of my bodice right above the skirt. Now it's time to work on the sleeves, which means they need to be hemmed. I just hemmed these about like a fourth of an inch, very, very minute. And then I also folded down the top section of my sleeve half an inch to create a channel for my elastic. And now it's time to attach your sleeves to your bodice. You do this by matching up the underseam of your sleeve to the side seam of your bodice. Pin that into place and then you're going to insert the elastic into the top channel of your sleeve. And this elastic length is just based on the fit that you want. And then once that elastic is inserted, the edges of those channels are going to be pinned in place to the front edges of your bodice, creating the sleeve. Once everything is pinned into place, you can go ahead and sew that together by sewing the underarm curve of your bodice on both sides, which attaches the sleeve. And now it's time to create the elastic at the end of your sleeve. So I went ahead and sewed bias tape, a bias tape channel, about an inch and a half up from the bottom of my sleeve. I just kind of eyeballed the bias tape of where I wanted it to be placed and then put a seam at the top and bottom of it, leaving a hole at the very end so that I could go and insert my elastic. So the idea with these sleeves is that once the elastic is inserted, there is a really big ruffle at the edge. You will cut your elastic by deciding how tight or loose you want it around your arms. So you can go ahead and just fit that to yourself and then cut two equal pieces. Use a botkin or pin a safety pin to the edge of that and then insert it into those channels that you created with bias tape on the inside of your sleeve. Once the elastic is inserted through the channels, you can pin them together and then sew the elastic into place. Last but not least, it is time to hem the bottom of our skirt. So I did this by just pressing up the bottom of my skirt half an inch and then hemming it all the way around since I already surged the raw edge. And because I had fabric left over and because we are currently in the middle of a pandemic, I decided to make a matching face mask. So if you're watching this video in the future, there's a point in time where we had to wear a face mask when we left our house. So how I made this face mask, um, I basically just drafted the pattern. There are a ton of downloadable patterns exactly like this online. Um, so if you want to learn how to make one of those, you can Google it or you can reach out to me and I can send you what I have made or maybe in the future I might make a mask tutorial. We shall see. Essentially this mask is incredibly easy and I really like it because it's comfortable to wear since it contours to your face.
Here is the final reveal for the design of this dress. I am so happy with how it turned out. It definitely looks so much like the original. And I think one of my favorite parts of this dress are the sleeves because they are just so poofy and frilly and I love the ruffle detail at the bottom. I kind of feel like a Disney princess in this dress if a Disney princess lived in the 21st century. And I am also super obsessed with the ruching on this bodice. It's just so flattering and incredibly comfortable. It was also so fun to go downtown where I live and film the reveal of this dress at this historic house slash museum that we have. It's one of my favorite places to visit and take pictures and I kind of went with the whole classic southern inspiration for how I styled this dress. I grabbed a basket purse, added some hydrangeas, and styled this dress with lace-up espadrilles. And before you think that all you can do is wear this dress to dressy or fancy places, never fear because all you have to do is grab a pair of sneakers, throw your hair in a ponytail, grab your matching mask, and head to the grocery store. All right, that is the end of this project, everyone. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you were inspired, make sure to give this a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any new videos or projects in the future.